First things first, we thought it was Cam or Mac. But it be, could it be Cam and Mac? Could Bill Belichick unleash a two quarterback system this season? Hey, speaking of Max, the Raiders called the Bears to see if they'd want to oh. trade Khalil Mack back. What are you doing, John Gruden? We'll discuss that. And Nick sparked the debate yesterday. Is Tom Brady really a top 10 player this season? With that, we say good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf, Nick Wright, Kevin Wells. We've got Greg Jennings in with us this morning. Greg. Age 44, Tom Brady, top 10. What say you? I say the way he's playing, he's top 10. Top 10. 10. We're going to have quite a debate today. There it is. You and I agree. Top 10. Top 10, they go all the way to 10. But just barely. Uh, We'll Well, get to all that. we got to start with some Jags, Saints. Last night, nothing like a little competition to get the juices flowing. Taysom versus Jameis. An advantage, Jameis Winston last night. He completed nine of ten passes with two long touchdown throws. Taysom got out there, started slow, got sacked a couple of times, but did finish 11 for 20 with a touchdown. No rushing attempts to report. So it would appear that Jameis has taken the lead in this quarterback battle. But head coach Sean Payton still not ready to name a starter. Take a listen. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. For me, like in general, like is this a... Yeah, I don't have a time frame, though. I'll give you, like, when we we know what direction we're going, we'll we'll let you guys know. And we're not going to, you know, try to anticipate saying, hey, it's going to be midweek or next week. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, the best way for us to handle it. And it's kind of how we've always handled something like this. The old non-starter started. Nick, start with you. Did Jameis prove that he is actually the same starter after what you saw last night? Well, I hate to start a show by stealing a phrase from a person who stole the phrase from someone else. But to quote Chris Broussard quoting Kenny Smith, it's over. It's over, America. This quarterback competition that never should have been an actual competition is over. Jameis Winston is the starting quarterback. And the reason I know it is because Jameis Winston is the only quarterback. Taysom Hill is a lot of things. Moderately handsome man. Very successful in his early 30s. Useful to have on your football team. A quarterback, however, he is not. And last night did demonstrate that while Jameis obviously has limitations, and those limitations relate to turning the football over, either via fumble or or interception in his career, he is a quarterback. He won a Heisman Trophy playing quarterback, a national championship playing quarterback, and was a number one overall pick as a quarterback. So I understand Sean Payton's ego can get in the way of things at times, and his ego dictates he wants it to be Taysom Hill. But Greg, it is now not even a discussion. Jameis made things very easy for him last night, playing as well as he did, and with Taysom particularly early playing as poorly as he did. Jameis has to be the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. You're absolutely right. This is a no contest, in my opinion. When you look at their roster, where does players best suit the team? Well, for Jameis Winston, it's that quarterback because that's the only position he can play. When you look at what Taysom Hill provides for you, his best assets, his best value to the team is not suited at quarterback. We've seen it on display. Sean Payton has used him in a variety of ways that has impacted games. That needs to be the constant. Now, I get it. They have a lot invested in Taysom Hill, so you don't want to just outright say he's not the guy. So you make sure it's going to possibly be a quarterback battle or or a challenge, if you will, or competition. But look, Jameis Winston He's had his woes, but he's had some great games in this league. The potential is there, and I know we hate using that word, and we hate hearing it as athletes, but when you have that type of potential and you can hone it in 
and you get the right head coach, you get the right team around you. He had an opportunity to sit back and reflect and learn from Drew Brees all year last year. He has grasped a little something, and you can tell. I wouldn't have him leading any type of conversations as far as team preps and all that. That's not his deal. But playing quarterback, <laughs> we see that is what he does great. He's poised. Uh-huh. He can put you in every position. He can make every single throw. While Jameis Winston is the guy, Taysom Hill is the the gadget guy. Let's just call it what it is. That's right. That's right. That's right. But but Greg, you have to make the deal. If Jameis is starting, he is going to eat a few W's. That's just the way it is. It's just part. I don't know if it's in the contract, but he's going to lead the thing just like Drew Brees. He's going to eat W's. Uh, Nick, I want to get back to you about Sean Payton. Because I've heard you say this before. Yeah. You're like, ah, you know, Sean Payton discovered Taysom Hill. Sean Payton draws up all these gadget plays for Taysom Hill. He's invested in Taysom yeah. Hill. There's a certain ego to it. Don't you think the flip side could be true? That you're going up against Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians was like, can't win with this guy. He jettisons Jameis off. So now you can have your same sort of ego itch scratch if you can prove that you can not only well, win with Jameis, but beat Tom Brady with Jameis. Don't you think that that would soothe some of the ego portion of Sean Payton's decision making? I mean, I feel like if you're a Saints fan and you know Sean Payton, that's what you should be telling him. Like, no, buddy, you're going to get a ton of credit for this, too. No, it's fine. (laughs) That's right. But I I just think, I I think that he has looked at Taysom as, oh, nobody thought, nobody believed in this guy. Anybody could have had him. Not only did I put him on the roster, not only did I let him return kicks and be in punt coverage and play running back and play wide receiver, he's going to be Drew Brees' heir apparent. And so much of this has been Emperor's New Clothes stuff. Do you remember the three hours that we thought Taysom Hill got a four-year, $140 million contract? (laughs) And then it was like, wait, what? And then it was like, no, actually, it's a zero-year, $0 million contract. It's just a weird thing they did with the cap to offset some of the numbers for this year. So the reason I bring that up is, because it was all vo- instantly voided years, that 4140 could have been four for 14 or four for 1.4 billion. It all means the same, nothing. So there's a reason that they called it four years 140, right in line with right beneath the Dak Prescott contract. Because they want to continue acting as if, if we call this guy a quarterback enough, if we treat him like a quarterback enough, if we put news stories out there like he's in a quarterback competition enough, he'll magically turn into a quarterback. And instead, even at the he's just of winning? Taysom Hill. Well, we'll see if it's at the expense of winning. Thus far, Jenna, I mean, it's the preseason. So, no, it's not at the expense of winning because who cares? But I, it is the, and the point, Greg, that you made is an important one. It's not only that Jameis is the better quarterback. It's that if Taysom is playing quarterback, Jameis is standing on the sidelines wearing a hat. If Jameis is playing quarterback, Taysom can be on the field helping you. And since you might not have Michael Thomas for a bulk of the year, with you know still dating back to the injury he suffered when Sean Payton was trying to run things up on Bruce Arians and Tom Brady week one of last year, you're going to need, Callaway was awesome last night, but you're going to need all the playmakers you can find, and Taysom's good in those roles. So you, it's not only that Jameis is the better quarterback, it's that your skill position room gets better if Taysom's in that room instead of infiltrating the quarterback room. You're 100% right. When you think about Sean Payton and what he does best, he puts guys in positions to where he has the advantage, the one-on-one matchups. Taysom Hill is a nightmare for defenses anywhere on the field other than quarterback. Anywhere on the field other than quarterback. (laughs) And so when you think about the advantage that you have, it's not with Taysom Hill at quarterback. That does not mean you can't use him there. But I think a lot of this also has to do with just the the psyche of of athletes. So Taysom Hill wants to be labeled as a quarterback. And he has a head coach that is just as ego-driven and and bullish as he is when it comes to this is the quarterback. 
So they they are both set out to prove that he's a quarterback. But more importantly, I think Sean Payton understands I got to make sure I give this kid a tr- opportunity. Why? Because if I don't, he's going to feel like I didn't live up to what I have told him behind closed doors. Look, I don't even need to know the conversations. I understand how it works. I'm going to give you, you're going to get your opportunity. Just sit and wait. Just sit. Just wait. Just wait. Now Drew Brees is gone. Here's your opportunity. But in comes Jameis Winston, and he's actually a real quarterback, and he's actually a pretty good quarterback with a great upside that we can't just turn away from. And so for me, as a former wide receiver, when I watch the film, I see a quarterback in Jameis Winston. We've all seen a quarterback every time Jameis Winston has been under center. The only issue with Jameis Winston was his decision-making. Being smarter with the football everywhere on the field, in particular in the red zone. If Sean Payton can somehow, wow, you alluded to this, find him, find a way to get Jameis Winston to reel back all those errant throws, and he can compete against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Jameis Winston and wave that in the face of Bruce Arians and Tom Brady and the cast of Buccaneers, that is a win for Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints. Well, I like that. Yep, decision-making and eyesight. We'll see. He's taking care of one already. 19 days, by the way, well, so right. all of our LASIK questions James. are answered. Er, LASIK James. LASIK right. Unit. James. That's right. Saints host the pack week one on five. He can see. He can see. Back talking Khalil yeah. Mack now. Raiders calling the Bears this offseason. Say if they could get Mack back. What does this say about John Gruden? Find out next. First things first. All pro pass rusher Khalil Mack entering his fourth season in Chicago. Remember, John Gruden traded him there for draft picks a couple years ago. Well, it was reported yesterday his former team, former coach, now wants him back. Vic Tafour in The Athletic wrote this. Gruden faced a media backlash when he traded Mack for a bunch of draft picks, including two first-rounders, nine days before the 2018 season opener. It says a lot about his tunnel vision for the playoffs that he would not care about what people would say about him trading to reacquire Mack. Hey, Greg Jennings, the Raiders trying to reacquire Khalil Mack from the Bears is blank. Is this for me is a head scratcher, man. I just you had him. He was yours. And you just matter of fact, he was yours when he was an even more impactful and a greater player than in 2018. You let him walk away. You basically said, here, Bears, give me whatever you wish, whatever you will. And so the Bears threw everything at him. Four picks here. You can have it. Give me Khalil Mack because I know what he provides. When you look at what Khalil Mack is and what he's done for the Chicago Bears, he's kind of – now, the Chicago Bears haven't won playoff games since Khalil Mack has been there, but he's stabled – he stabilized their defense. He allowed this team to at least be in contention and have some type of that bear moxie come back to their organization. Look at what he's done. Khalil Mack versus the Raiders defensive line, which they really don't have anyone as far as pass rushers outside of Max Crosby. And I I get down with Max because he's a former Mack player, Eastern Michigan. Kudos to you, my guy. But Khalil Mack has 30 (laughs) sacks to Max Crosby, 17. And no other player, no other D lineman or pass rusher is even in double digits for the Raiders since 2018. Then you go down to just QB hits, QB pressures. Khalil Mack, 45 by his lonesome. And then there's Max Crosby. Now, again, Max Crosby has only been there a couple years. So what have the Raiders done? They've done nothing. Now, they did acquire, obviously, out of the trade, Jacoby or Josh Jacobs, excuse me. And so he has been special. Obviously, we've all seen what he's able to do with running the football. He has been special. He's been the one highlight that they've acquired. They have a couple guys that just haven't really come into their own. 
But Khalil Mack has changed the game for the Chicago Bears. And so if I'm John Gruden, I'm scratching my head, Adam, because I I just don't understand what you didn't see to start. Yeah, next thing you know, Greg, Tim's going to be trying to get back with Alyssa. Like, hey, man, you had her. What are you doing, buddy? You, you said get out of here. Now you're going to be like, hey, come back to me. It and makes then no he sense. proposes uh, to her on this, the Jumbotron. Yeah, yeah, like, what are, what are we doing? Exactly. So, to me, this is the sign, Wilds, of ultimate job security. Like, listen, the Raiders haven't been good in, I mean, they've had one really good season in essentially the last 20 years. Now they've gotten a touch better each year under Gruden, but never been anything close to contenders, never been anything close to winning the division. And what kills Gruden on this deal specifically is, the, the jury is no longer out. When you trade a great player for draft picks, you always are going to get killed in the immediacy because you're losing a great player and what you're getting back are ideas. But now those ideas are fully formed players and it's like, oh. So the Raiders draft since Gruden's been there have not been good. Yes, Josh Jacobs is good. Colton Miller has been pretty good. But for, in large parts, a lot of Damon Arnett, uh, Henry Ruggs, is he going to stay healthy? Like, they haven't hit yeah, on like their it. picks. So, but Gruden can do it because he's got a 10-year deal for a team that's not known for loving throwing money around. So he can, you know, he can float this, doesn't matter what people say, because he has the ultimate job security wilds. I, I found it odd that people were criticizing Gruden so much for this. If Khalil Mack is available and the Bears are trying to offload the salary, why wouldn't you say, you know who I loved on the team? Khalil Mack. Because when Bill Belichick does it, Bill Belichick is a genius. We got Trent Brown on the back on the team. We got Kyle Van Noy back on the team. We're like, great. You know whatever the narrative is? Ah, Belichick, it's the old Patriot way. It permeates the league. Once you're a Patriot, you're always a Patriot and bring people back. He doesn't get any criticism for letting guys leave and coming back. And I understand it's because we won a lot of Super Bowls, but I don't think John Gruden deserves criticism for trying to bring the guy back. If you want to criticize him for letting him leave, sure. But trying to sort of right or wrong, I think that it deserves praise, not criticism there. Here's the thing, though, Wilds. You know what's not Belichickian? Taking old victory laps after a week five regular season win. The Raiders have not recovered from that karmic disaster for them. And if you remember, remember this play. Look, the Raiders, they're six and three. They're about to take the lead in the division. Oh! no one's guarding Travis Kelsey. Maybe some of those picks you trade away for Cleo Mack should have been guarding Travis Kelsey. From that moment forward, their season down the tubes. John Gruden's whole little empire down the tubes. It all started with those laps around Arrowhead. And then your safeties were still on the damn bus. They forgot to guard Travis Kelsey. Lose it up. the game. Season goes to hell. So there you go. Lap it up, There you go, Raiders. Lap it up. Lap it up. Wild. Speaking of... <laughs> Go ahead, Go ahead, Jenna. Go ahead. All right. Well, we'll move on. Speaking of uh, Belichick, Ian, let's talk some Patriots. Could Bill really employ a two-quarterback system with Cam and Mac this season? It's very un-Belichickian of him. We'll toss that around next. First things first on a Tuesday morning. Back here with Greg Jennings. How about that? We're welcoming Coach Man Genie to the conversation. All right. Coach, let's talk some Cam Newton. He's going to be away from the Patriots facility until Thursday, this after a misunderstanding over the COVID testing protocols after Cam left the area for a doctor's appointment. Greg, I'll start with you. Can Mac Jones use Cam's absence to secure the Patriots' starting job? You know, first off, Jenna, this is this is sad. This is disappointing when you think about Cam Newton and where he started to drop off last year. It was COVID related. It was when he was out and he never was able to get back to what we saw in those first few games. So can Mac Jones ascend and step in and take that position? I don't think so. I don't think so because Cam Newton looks like a completely different quarterback for the New England Patriots. He looks like he's more comfortable, more confident, and he understands what is being asked of him at the quarterback position within this system with the pieces around him. And he just all all to all around gives you more. Uh, When you look at Mac Jones, yes, can he stand to the pocket? Can he make the throws that you want him to make? 
he absolutely can. But how much of the offense have you really unloaded on him? And can you really put on his plate going into week one? With Cam Newton, you know he's been there from last year. He didn't have the offseason last year. He now had the offseason and all of training camp. I think this is Cam Newton's job to lose. It's just unfortunate that he's going to be out because Mac Jones, he can creep in there. I don't think it happens. What's so strange about this is being there for as long as I was in New England and then dealing with with Bill in, in Cleveland as well and being with Bill in Cleveland and, and at the Jets, that there's very little room for misunderstandings in terms of what you're supposed to do. And and it's shocking to me that, that there's any misunderstanding on, on when you're supposed to be somewhere, what, what you're supposed to take care of. And and that part is is doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Now that does open up an opportunity for Mac Jones to get extra reps, to get extra work uh, against the Giants, to get more opportunities to show that that he he could be the starter, to to get more coaching. And I don't think that's that's a position that that Cam wants to be in. He Cam should be significantly better than he was last year. He's got a year in the system. He's got a preseason. He's got training camp. He's got all those things. The jump should be should be significant. And if it's not opportunities like this are are huge for for yeah. a young quarterback it, the, it, and it's a massive opportunity for mac jones who i'm not incredibly bullish on but he now gets all the reps with the ones and he gets a wednesday joint practice with the giants to try to separate himself or gain ground on cam or potentially pass cam and i felt terribly for cam newton last year when there was, through no fault of his own, nothing he could do, his season gets derailed by COVID. I do not have, I love, I've always been a huge fan of Cam. I do not have sympathy for him in this situation whatsoever. This is totally preventable. If he is not subject to this five day re-entry protocol if he's vaccinated. He made the choice to not get vaccinated. The repercussions are, oh, you go to a doctor's appointment out of state, we'll see you in, in basically a week. Those are the rules. He either knew it and didn't care, should have known it and didn't know it, or option C, take the free, easy, healthy, effective vaccine that athletes across America that aren't paid to play sports have to take. My daughter's literally on her way to volleyball practice right now not allowed to play on the high school volleyball team without the vaccine. Cam's chosen not to get it. The, you know what? This comes with the territory, evidently. And if it, Wilds, if it means Mac Jones, you know, opportunities, not a lengthy visitor, they say. If he can take advantage of this opportunity, <laughs> then all of a sudden, it could change the trajectory of what Bill Belichick's thinking. I feel like Belichick has, at every turn, almost uncharacteristically, been not deferential to Cam, but kind like kind is the wrong word also. But you understand what I mean? Like he clearly has some real affection for Cam, has respected the way right. Cam's worked, has wanted I think he wants Cam to be the week one starter. But now Mac Jones gets a lot of practice time, a lot of reps that he wouldn't otherwise get, and maybe Mac takes advantage of it. Yeah, so I also want Cam to be the week one starter. And so I'm disappointed that he loses valuable time. It's not like he's been here for 20 years. He's been here for basically a year and missed some time last year with COVID. So I would prefer if Cam Newton was, uh, was vaccinated. I think it, like you said, Nick, is the healthy, free alternative to uh, end a worldwide global pandemic. But uh, this is where we are in the world. But coach, I want to ask you, a question about Belichick and specifically how he's dealing with this issue. When Cam was asked if he was vaccinated, because the reporters are on this, this was I think a month ago, he was like, it's a personal decision. They also asked Mac Jones if he was vaccinated and he danced around it a little bit and that people started to think he was, but the answer wasn't yes. Then they asked Bill Belichick for some reason if he was vaccinated, which everyone knows he has to be vaccinated, and he also said it was a personal decision. We've seen guys like Ron Rivera come out and been like, yes, I'm obviously vaccinated, I want my team vaccinated. Bill Belichick is taking almost a softer approach or at least a, a closer to the vest um, sort of like public narrative. What do you make of this so like where we've seen Belichick draw a very hard line? We've seen Belichick cut guys because they were late to practice in a snowstorm. 
How do you think, or what's your take on how Belichick is handling this specific issue publicly? Uh, well, you know, Kevin, we don't we don't talk about injuries. We don't talk about injuries. We don't talk about anything to do with with vaccinations. We don't talk about anything to do with. We don't make predictions. It, it, look, it's a very yeah. clear message. There is no reason from from his perspective to to talk about this because all it's going to do is is create the list of who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, what that means. People will analyze it. Uh, look, that, that that discussion has has gone on in in the team meeting in terms of, of how to approach this, and it's just easier to say I'm not talking about it because then then yeah. it's it's like we're discussing. Nobody really knows who is and who isn't because nobody's nobody's taken a a, a firm stance one way or the other. Uh, my my frustration outside of not taking the vaccine is then to be in a situation where you don't understand what the protocols are. You you can't do that when you're in a when you're in a competition, everything matters and and availability matters, reliability matters, understanding what you you're supposed to do, especially at the quarterback position matters. So it's it it's not it's not insignificant when you miss time based off of a misunderstanding because misunderstandings are preventable. And in that environment, it's not like you don't have very clear directions as to what you're supposed to do. You were never sitting around going, huh, I wonder what the itinerary is today. That was all clear. <laughs> so this misunderstanding is, is, to me, problematic. That's right. And preventable. Uh, time for a little in or out. Sponsored by Midas. Tires, brakes, oil, everything. Make your appointment at Midas.com today. Let's stick with the Patriots. Bill Belichick didn't do something yesterday, and it made headlines. How about that? He didn't completely rule out using both Cam and Mac in a two-quarterback system. Take a listen to this. Do you ever see yourself platooning two quarterbacks? Uh, you know, it's... Those specific questions like that are really, are really hard to answer. I mean, here's what I'll always say. I will always say I'm going to do what's best for the team. I'm going to do whatever I can to help the team win. So if that's, you know, playing a guard in the backfield, then we'll play a guard in the backfield. If it's, you know, putting 10 defensive backs on the field, if that's what it is, then maybe we put 10 defensive backs on the field. So, I, I mean, I'm not going to rule out anything. If I think it's if some would help us win, then I would consider it. All right, Greg, you win or out on the Patriots using both Cam and Mac in a two quarterback system. I'm out. I'm out, completely out. You already didn't have Cam 100% of the time last year, and you saw what he provided at the beginning of the year, then COVID happened, and then all the inconsistencies. Now you potentially could have him, barring the vaccination and what that may present. I'm just simply out because he provides much more than what you would get if you just solely went with Mac Jones. So I'm, I'm out. I'm I'm in if Mac Jones is the starter. You bring Cam in as a change of pace guy and do things that are that are totally different. I'm out if Cam is is the starter because I don't think you bring a a stationary quarterback in to change the pace. Correct. That's smart. That's smart. I like. All that. right. That's yeah. I like that too. Okay. We got to shift gears. We got to talk about the old Patriots quarterback. Who you call an old? Tom Brady. Fox Bet Sportsbook has the over/under for how many more seasons Brady will play at two and a half. Does that sound about right for Nick's tenth best player in the National Football League? We'll discuss. First things first. Back after this. First things first, back here with Super Bowl champs, Greg Jennings. We got Coach Mangini with us as well. We're talking the GOAT this morning, the owner of seven Super Bowl rings, Mr. Thomas Edward Patrick Brady, told Peter King he's going to keep playing as long as he's capable of winning the big game. Brady said, quote, I'll know when the time's right if I'm not a championship-level quarterback. Then I'm not going to play. If I'm a liability to the team, I mean, no way, but if I think I can win a championship, then I will play. Well, Nick unveiled his top players in the NFL this season, yeah. yesterday, and he has Brady at 10. Not 9 or 8 or 7, yeah. not 6 or 5 or 4, and not 3 or 2 or 1. He's down at 10. Nick, no. you care to defend yourself? 
That's more of a statement than a question, by the way. You have the platform. Go ahead. What? What, why does this demand defending? So, uh, first of all, that's a very interesting Tom Brady quote. If you were to take it literally, that would mean about midway through the second half of the NFC Championship game, Brady considered, you know, hanging it up. Like, oh, can't win championships. Keep throwing these picks. Can't win championship. But the defense overcame it, and the defense won him a Super Bowl. So, uh, listen, I, I, here's the thing. There are, what are there, 53 guys on an NFL roster. There's 32 teams. So, we're talking... 1,696 players. I got Tom Brady better than 1,686 of them. That's not bad. This is not an insult. There's no, I don't know why this is having to defend it. It is, did you see Lamar Jackson on that list? No. That guy won an MVP two years ago. Did you see uh, Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson on that list? No. Oh. Did you see what's the, what's the Darius Leonard's nickname? Captain Insano or the Maniac or something like that? See on that <laughs> list? No, he's not. Did you see any offensive linemen on that list? No, you didn't. Got Brady had all of them. Here's why I have Brady behind. The most talented quarterback in NFL history, Patrick Mahomes. The guy who previously was the most talented quarterback in NFL history, Aaron Rodgers. And then the singular best guys at all your impact positions in the league. That is not an insult. And I just, I, it, coach, if we're gonna do the but he just keeps winning, then I guess, like, if you're going to say he needs to be ahead of Rodgers, then he also has to be ahead of Mahomes. And putting Tom Brady ahead of Mahomes, come on, nobody actually thinks Tom Brady's better than Patrick Mahomes. You don't think that? You named two of your kids after him. You don't think it. <laughs> come on. I think your argument is a little bit like that race against Mr. Freeze. There's a lot of good things, but at the end, you're going to lose because... You, you talked about you, you talked about the, um, the the other nicknames like Mister Incredible, Insano. Look at Tom's nickname. It's the yeah. goat. It's the goat, and it's the goat for a reason. And and <laughs> his production his production last year. What he throw forty touchdowns, which put him second in the league to to Rogers. Now he did that. He now he's a little bit better than he's Mahomes, I'm pretty Rogers. sure. And and he was he was tied with Russell Wilson. But the, the thing that's different with Thomas, he was with a new team. He was in a new environment, and and what you don't yeah, ever take into account. Said, Get out of here. Okay, and and the, look how that worked out. That worked out really well for him, didn't well, it? it? Didn't, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this didn't work out too well. Yeah. Now it worked out pretty well for Tampa Bay. It didn't really work out for Kansas City either that he was in Tampa Bay. Oh. But you know, that being that being said, all that being said, what you don't take into account is not just how you play, how you individually play. But it's the impact on the others around you and how they play. And I bring this up all the time, the idea of a force multiplier. And Tom yes. Brady is the ultimate force multiplier. He makes everybody yeah. around him better, including the offense. Or I'm sorry, including the defense, including the coaching staff, including everybody else, because he sets up such a high bar. He's got incredible character. He holds people to a standard and he makes you want to be the best because he's the best. Now, what value does that have? It has significant value. Can he throw eight more right. touchdowns like Aaron Rodgers? Yes, yes he can, but he's making everybody else better <laughs> as well. Okay, hold so on. Go ahead, go right, ahead this, Mr. Freeze. This idea or a guy that he's racing just Mr. opting, <laughs> the idea that he's just opting against throwing more touchdowns, that that's, oh yeah, it's available to him, he's just not tapping into it. May, he no, that's, maybe that's he could have thrown one saying. more I'm touchdown saying, last year. I'm saying some arbitrary, arbitrary number. Yeah, okay, there's eight touchdowns. We, we could point to a lot of different statistics. No, the guy did it with I a didn't new team numbers. during COVID. I no, got it. but you I love numbers. You're a numbers guy. I do love numbers, but I don't need the numbers for this. I can go, I can go eye test. I can go feel. I can go tingle down the back of my spine when I watch him play. What? Where do we give the check marks? Maybe Brady got screwed out of not eight, but one touchdown pass last year. I think he probably would have thrown a touchdown on the play where he thought he had a fifth down. He had something great drawn up, but unfortunately the game was over and the <laughs> drive was over. That's either here nor there. The, here's the thing, Greg. I agree His with everything Coach said. His weighed down by all those Which is Super why Bowl rings. He couldn't. <laughs> all it, it, those Super Bowl rings. All that's my what it was. Rings. I know. That's what it was like. Tell oh, my God. God. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So let's take Josh Allen for a moment. Josh Allen has a stronger arm than Brady, is obviously more mobile than Brady, 
and statistically we want to do numbers, had a better year last year than Brady. I have Brady ahead of Josh Allen. Why? Because of all the things Coach listed. I think Russell Wilson is at this point in his career uh, better if you were to just kind of grade the measurables better than Brady. But I have Brady ahead of him because of all those leadership intangible, un, you know, je ne sais quoi that you can't really define. But, but at some Very point, handsome. there's got to be a limit to that. And I think Tim's awful respectful, to be honest. I think a lot of folks would have had him 14, behind Lamar, behind Russ, behind Josh Allen. I gave him 10. I thought I was being nice, to be honest. So here's the thing. So for me, I agree with both of you, and, and I want to start with Coach. The reason why I, I agree with Coach is because of I love the force multiplier saying that you always have. The, his ability to make everyone better, but it wasn't just about everyone else. He played good last year, and this is a list that is about last football season. Tom Brady was a excellent player yes he won the super bowl yes the team had tremendous amounts of success but he individually had a great season so i agree with you there coach yes but this is where i start to side with nick and the more i look at the list the less and less i can put tom brady in front of any of those guys because when you look at the, guy. the guys and i and i get it we we can't I think the hardest part to do is to take such a great player and remove the career from in front of you. Like, if you remove the career and you look at the list of these players and the ability and the t all the tangibles, it's Jalen Ramsey, Fred Moore, Kelsey, position by position, the way, Nick, you presented it, I'm like, you know what? I don't. I can't put Tom in front of it's those guys list. because of that. My and guy, when Greg. you take these guys, Handsome you take and these guys right here. What a you take these guys right here and you remove them from their team, just like Tom Brady. The team drastically is impacted. I get it, but yeah. Tom Brady is he a top ten guy? I think so for sure. I, I love yeah. what he's saying. Okay. I love how he's playing. Good. Greg, I, I, I get so that, and you're saying if you take if you take them away, that team will be dramatically impacted. The flip side of that is if you add them to another team, is he going to lead that team to a Super Bowl? That's a totally different part of this equation. When you okay. take a human so being out of their environment and put them in another environment, can he have that impact? That's and I don't know point. who on that list is going to be able to do that. So here, here's it. that's the great point that 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 for me that yes, Tom Brady wins that. And if he wins it because he has this magnetic ability to recruit and to get guys to want to play with him and to just find a way to get guys to jump on board and make them more than what we've seen them in the past. What do I mean by that? If you if you ask Fred Warner or Jalen Ramsey or or even Aaron Rodgers to go to another situation. Will players want to go there? Possibly, but will they feel the love? Will they feel the value? Will they feel like they are the number one piece to make this work? Yeah. The way Tom Brady makes everyone feel. I don't know how he does it, but everyone feels like they are the most important piece because it comes out of Tom Brady's mouth. That is the differentiator to me when it comes to Tom Brady and going to another situation where the other guys, yes, you're correct. I don't know if they have that type of an impact. It's not that they wouldn't perform, but will they be able to draw and elevate everybody else? I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's certainly like he recruited his friends, like right when Gronk came and AB came, but he also re recruited guys who weren't necessarily his friends. It's not like like you know the running backs had like a great relationship with him, but he brought people there. But Greg, I want to ask you this about this about Tom Brady, and it's about how his age sort of has magnified and multiplied his leadership. Because like when Zach Wilson was played against Packers. He was like, oh, he's like, got a chance to like fanboy out uh, with Aaron Rodgers. It's this idea that like the older you get and you're playing with guys who grew up watching you, 
sort of makes your leadership that much more powerful. So as Tom Brady gets older and older and older, I think his leadership will continue to be, to be even stronger than it is right now because so many people have watched him, because his legacy keeps growing and growing and growing. Do you buy that, like the older that he gets, the stronger leader he becomes for this list, which is actually, to go a step back, this is not just Nick's list. These are the last 10 guys of the NFL 100s list, which is voted on by the players. No, that's I no, no. That's the, but that, hold on, just to clarify real quick. No, th this isn't their 10, because they have Devontae Adams, they have Josh Allen. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry, you're right. He took two guys out. You're right. Yeah, yeah, but so Brady's on. No, no, no. Brady's, no, no, Brady's, guys guys Bra Brady's yeah, on yeah. there in, in their top 10 somewhere. We just you're don't right. know where. But go ahead, Greg. So to answer your question, Wilds, I don't know if it's his leadership gets better i think he just understands so much more and more every single year every time you gain more experience the longer you're in the league i think for me the legend of tom brady just continues to grow because he continues to win at the age that yeah. he is and yeah. when you think about the ability of him his ability to win at 40 plus years old and do it effectively and not it's not just based on the pieces around him and it, you can't just equate the winning to up oh, well he had a great supporting cast or it was everybody else when his numbers suggest that well shoot if they didn't have him they don't win that's what is so impressive that's where yeah. i feel like his legend just grows the more he's able to continue to sustain this level of play yeah, listen, and it's the and the impact is obvious felt throughout the organization, and I mean the impact is so almost earth shaking. It is in his last two Super Bowls, Tom Brady's impact as the quarterback has made the defenses of the two teams he's taken to the Super Bowl hold the opposition to single digit points, and that's obviously <laughs> all Tom. It's not Brian Flores. It's not Todd Bowles. It's not Indomitian Sue. It's not those guys. It's Tom, and that you know, and that's why he has the seven rings. It wasn't coaches' defenses that he had early on when Tom Brady threw one touchdown in three playoff games, and actually player? Bledsoe made the biggest pass in that Super. Bowl. But it's fine no it's tom i get it and that's why he's 10th that's why there's only nine people in the world better at football than him because he's right. magical so year 22 for he's tom so brady irritating. 16 days away uh stick with some quarterback talk in the nfc south move over to new orleans talking some Jameis winston had himself a night but did he do enough to secure the saints starting job that's next first things first greg thank you Tomorrow night on FS1, the MLS All-Star Game takes center stage as Major League Soccer's biggest stars take on the best of Liga MX. The action kicking off tomorrow, 9 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Nice. Time now for stories to start your morning, brought to you by Subway. We're talking some Taysom, talking some Jameis. And last night, Jameis Winston pulled out ahead, completed 9 of 10 passes, two long touchdown throws. Taysom was in there. He started slow. Did get sacked twice, but he finished 11 for 20 with a TD. No rushing attempts to report. And after last night, it would appear Jameis has taken the lead in this quarterback battle. But head coach Sean Payton still not quite ready to name a starter. Take a listen to this. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. For me, like in general, like is this a yeah, I don't have a time frame though. I'll give you like when we we know what direction we're going, we'll we'll let you guys know, and we're not going to. You know, try to anticipate saying, hey, it's going to be midweek or next week. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, the best way for us to handle it. And it's kind of how we've always handled something like this. Mm. Nick, did Jameis prove he is the Saints starter last night? Unquestionably, undoubtedly, yes. And man, we were really close to getting very lucky. We were off the last two weeks, and somehow because we were off the last two weeks, uh, we missed the entire Tim Tebow beginning, middle, and end of that story. Uh, I was like, oh my God, what a relief. You wanted to do I it, Wilds, so I did not. If we'd have just shifted the vacation a week in the future, we could have missed the whole Taysom Hill thing too, because it's over now. 
Like the, 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 I, the emperor was trying to tell us he was wearing a beautiful fancy suit and he's been naked all along. There's not a quarterback battle. The Saints don't have a great quarterback situation. But at least in Jameis Winston, they have a quarterback situation rather than a H-back, gadget-back situation, which is what Taysom is. Taysom Hill is a useful NFL player in a lot of spots. Quarterback's not one of them. He is a negative play waiting to happen. One in six of his dropbacks in his career have ended in a sack or a turnover. He just, he's 31 years old. He's not a quarterback. He is what he is at this point. I know Sean Payton LeVar wanted to make him a quarterback, wanted to use the old, the secret uh, line of thinking and speak it into existence. It's not happening. And on the flip side, you have Jameis, who looked awesome last night. Now, is that who Jameis is going to be throughout the year? No, he, he's not going to be that good. And is Marquez Callaway going to all of a sudden be a top five receiver in football? Almost assuredly not. But that was a real functioning NFL offense. And it wouldn't be that with Taysom. So obviously, Jameis Winston is the starting quarterback because unlike Taysom Hill, he's actually a quarterback. You know, when I look at the situation, it's certainly a quarterback's competition, maybe the only real quarterback competition of note uh, in this year's preseason because I just don't believe that if somebody is the incumbent starter and there's someone who has been drafted or there's someone who has been brought in by free agency uh, are going to have a real opportunity. Like I looked at Chicago and I've tried to convince myself that there is a competition there. There isn't. Dalton is the guy until he's not the guy. So when I look at this scenario, what did I what did I learn from Jameis Winston's performance that he can protect the ball, that he still has some accuracy right. and 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 can show uh, the ability to get the ball downfield. So he has proven that he can be the starter for the New Orleans Saints, and I think that that's the bigger takeaway here. Who will be the starter? I'm not certain of that, but this is a quarterback competition. And seemingly, Jameis Winston certainly took some very, very large steps forward in, in being named the starter of this, this outfit. Okay, so here's the thing. You can view football as this sort of cold, calculating exercise where whoever executes the best wins the game. Or you can view it the more fun way, which it actually is, which is about ego and power and confidence. So, Nick, two questions. They will both have the same answer. Mm -hmm. How did Michael Thomas get hurt? What team were those Saints playing against? And how, how did he get hurt? And then the second question is this. Who knocked the Saints out of the playoffs last year? They were playing the Tampa Bay Bucs in week one, trying to run up the score in a game that was over. And the Tampa yep. Bay Bucs knocked the Saints out of the playoffs last year. Okay, so now, Sean Payton, this is your chance. Like Nick said, we know that you wanted to make Taysom a thing. So, and, and you gotta let that go, and that will probably hurt your ego a, a little bit. But coming in from the side, I give you a bigger ego boost. It's the fact that you can beat the, the champs you can beat Bruce Arians. You can beat Tom Brady with Jameis Winston, who you, my friend, were able to take the number one draft pick, the Heisman Trophy winner, something Bruce Arians couldn't do. And you could turn him into a winner, and you can beat the Bucks. So put aside any, tame, any Taysom Hill stuff, bring in Jameis, prove that he's your quarterback, give a little sprinkle of Taysom Hill every now and then to prove that you're a brilliant play caller, but roll sprinkle. out with Jameis. Nick, are you buying this as an ego bomb? Why? Yeah, 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 sprinkle it. There it's it is. Sprinkle. Yeah, sprinkle. Sprinkle. Yeah. I, listen, I think, Wilds, I think that's a great idea, and I wish you could have convinced uh, Sean Payton of this a year ago to start that narrative rolling. But he has been so committed back to when he told Jay Glazer two Super Bowls ago, oh no, Taysom Hill's the heir apparent. Back to when this offseason, yeah. when they're like, hey, Taysom Hill, four year, $140 million contract. It's like, what? 
Guess he is the quarterback. And then it came out, actually, that's a zero-year, zero-million-dollar contract. It's all totally make-believe. The contract voids immediately. It's salary cap stuff. They could have called it $4 billion. It wouldn't have mattered. They, they, he has been trying to sell this narrative that he can create a quarterback out of whole cloth. The problem is, eventually, you got to go play. And Taysom's not good enough. At this position, and LeVar, I'll add this, the Saints are going to need a lot of help this year. Taysom can help you by not playing quarterback with the other things he can do. If Jameis isn't playing quarterback, he obviously does nothing for you. So I actually think it's a win-win. Jameis is the better quarterback, LeVar, and Taysom can play the spot he's most comfortable with, that kind of gadget guy, which is how I think, LeVar, this is going to end up playing out. You're probably right. I mean, we've had disagreements so far on this show, but I think you're probably spot on on this one. It will end up. And I enjoy disagreeing with you, Nick, but I will say this. uh, No, listen, you're spot. I think you're spot on on this one. I think Jameis will be the guy. And I think that he'll continue his same role. If there's anything that can bring people together. It's agreeing that Taysom Hill's not an NFL quarterback. This is not it's one your quarterback. thing in a time of polarization <laughs> and disrepair, we can all come together and agree on.